and as you see your heater your defrost control your defrost heater and your defrost thermostat is wiring in series not parallel so if your defrost thermostat is open at room temperature defrost heater will be terminate if your defrost thermostat is enclosed and the defrost control is asking for defrost power will complete the circuit from number two pass through your heater go through your defrost thermostat and make a complete circuit to your common will energize the defrost mode alright let's look at the next diagram This right here is showing you a picture of your defrost thermostat. You have four different kinds in here. But the most common we see is this one. Uh, you have it at GE and uh, Hotpoint and Whirlpool. And it's always marked with four prongs, one, two, three, and four. And at the bottom here, is showing you the evaporator the defrost heater where the position of your defrost heater is in your evaporator coil is right under here or if you have a flat evaporator coil the heater is right under here you have a vertical evaporator coil your heater it should be right here and typically you have two different kind of defrost heater one is called solid state it looks like your open element and the other one is called glass tube you have a heat resistance inside the glass tube so that two popular uh, defrost heater that you have in your refrigerator alright on this section right here we're going to talk about the defrost thermostat are you in cause the, uh, ter uh, the ter terminator thermostat and your defrost heater how does it look like your defrost thermostat or terminator thermostat is uh, located inside your freezer compartment at your evaporator coil most of the time it is clipped on your evaporator coil and it looks like this with two wire you can see most of the time is pink color wire and brown wire what this component do is uh, it's open when it's at room temperature it's closed when it gets cold your refrigerator running for about 30 minutes or an hour your evaporated coil frost up and getting cold it will close the uh, defrost thermostat and when your defrost timer asking for defrost mode it will transfer power completely through your heater through your thermostat and go back to your common make it a complete electrical cycle to turn on to energize your electric heater to uh, defrost and usually your defrost time run in approximately 15 minutes every cycle your defrost thermostat or terminating thermostat it will terminate the defrost heater to prevent any further damage from the heat when it reach whatever the uh, manufacturer design temperature for that uh, defrost thermostat or terminating thermostat it will cut off your heater even your defrost timer still in defrost mode but the temperatures are already rich to where it's designed for on your terminating thermostat since we'll cut off the defrost heater to prevent burn and further damage 
and until your defrost timer motor at the end of the cycle and go back to the running cycle it will kick on your compressor your evaporator fan your condenser fan and terminate the defrost cycle and it runs for maybe another 30 minutes and your defrost thermostat or terminating thermostat will close back up again and that is how your defrost thermostat or terminating thermostat and your defrost heater work together and remember they are wiring in series not parallel so that's important make sure we remember that okay let's look at this chapter 4 is uh, step by step how to uh, troubleshoot your refrigerator let's look at the complaint the complaint is warm refrigerator or not as cold as usual and look at the chapter qualifier the important thing for you to know is your compressor is running so read the complaint again it's warm refrigerator or not as cold as usual chapter qualifier is compressor is running so let's begin let's say you have a work order and the resident complain that their refrigerator is not as cold as it used to be or it's getting warmer and by the time you got there you notice that the compressor is running uh, what the first thing we're going to do follow the step by step is you need to check or do any adjust to the temperature control in the refrigerator make sure the adjust control is set to the design temperature or number if you have hot point usually number three is your your me your middle number if you have a hot point if you have whirlpool is have a number between one to five and three is your ideal number and make sure they are setting at the desired temperature and if it's good you check the condenser for the clean liners if your condenser coil is dirty it will affect the cold of your refrigerator your refrigerator is not working efficiently see and uh, it's getting warmer if your condenser coil is not clean so we're gonna need to make sure that is clean let's say if your condenser is clean dirty you clean the condenser then you go down and check your condenser fan if your condenser fan is in inoperable not working what is it going to do to your refrigerator is your compressor is going to get overheat and it cut in and out it's run until it get hot and then it's cut out for a while until it kick back in as the overload protection is uh, stripped and it does affect the cold in your refrigerator so check for the motor de defective anything blockage uh, that causing your condenser fans not run and if you know all that is good then the next step you do is check your evaporator fan operation and as you see in this box make sure there's nothing blockage replay the motor if it's defective or replay defective door switch why your door switch got something to do with your refrigerator if you have a defective door switch your refrigerator lamp is always on even you close the door and the heat released from the light 
it makes your refrigerator warmer than normal and it's that affect the coldness of your refrigerator so make sure we check all that and let's look at down here is there excessive frost build up in the freezer if no you're gonna make sure it's evaporators cold if no you're gonna check compressor and free on charge if it's yes check or replay the cold control okay what it does your temperature control in your refrigerator compartment is not controlling how cold it is for your freezer it's only control how cold it is for your refrigerator compartment only so if your evaporator core is cold and you say yes you need to check and replay your temperature control let's go back to if you see the excessive frost build up in the freezer yes then we need to know where if it's in evaporator ducting only and then we need to go back up and check the evaporator fan operation and if it's the eye is on the frost and freeze on your evaporator we need to check the quality of frost build up and check for the frost pattern as you see right here evaporator evaporator build up frost build up in freezer yes and go down here where and if you is in your ducting only of your your, your uh, evaporator check your evaporator fan operator if it's on the evaporator coil and then you need to check the quality of frost build up and check for the frost pattern then look at an even frost pattern then you need to check for your compressor or free on charge and if you have snowy ice and heavy coating then do your refrigerator have the hot gas defroster uh, I don't think most of us have so it will be a no do you have hot gas defroster most of us don't have it so we're gonna answer it's gonna be no and then do you have whirlpool flex tray ice maker I think most of us don't have so we're gonna say no and the last thing you're gonna check is check your defrost system you're gonna be either timer the heater the terminate thermostat that's three items right there you need to check and replace any defective parts let's go back to the excessive frost build up in freezer again if you have a pattern it say clear and solid ice and then that's gonna be check your defrost drain when you have water sitting on the drain and it freeze up it's gonna be clear solid ice and then you need to check your defrost drain so that's how step by step to troubleshoot your refrigerator problem